Hello, everybody. It's Friday evening. I'm in a card mood. More specifically, I've got the itch to draft some more Eternal. There hasn't been any recent changes since, you know, obviously the release of set four, but you know, I, I still want to want to give it another go or two. I enjoyed this draft format enough. And I think we can still explore some more fun strategies, have some more fun with it. So that's what I'm going to do tonight. I'm going to do, I don't know, draft or two, depending on how time goes. Let's go ahead and get things started. Yep, as I've mentioned before, Fall of Argentport is the, the current draft set with the, like, draft packs that are curated for packs two and three. So, let's do it. Siphon Vitality! Oh dear! <laughs> I've never seen this card before. That's quite expensive for that. Enemy units get minus one, minus one. Your units get plus one, plus one. That's a... That's certainly a beating. Uh, you put that down and you feel real good about it. There's also a change stick. One of the most powerful commons. Sewer Sludge. I like Shame Bear as well. Basically, I like Mark of Shame when I'm not, like, having to include it in my deck. As as the card, Mark of Shame, because that's way expensive and doesn't have a body attached. Um, But yeah, Change Stick is good. Siphon Vitality would be fun. Shame Bear is real. Uh, Sewer Sludge is real. Pensive Lumen is strong. I don't know if I want to pick up Siphon Vitality right now because I don't like picking up two color cards right away. It's Siphon Vitality got me a seven too. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty real like effect. It might be like it's certainly unique enough to be worth the pick. I'll say that much. And like minus one, minus one, and plus one, plus one. Like with with how the this game goes, where it's just like and a board stall is happening. That's a good way to break it. I don't know if it's better than Change Stick, is sort of the problem. Hey, Shabadoo. Yeah, draft time. Just thinking about what I want to do, if I want to Siphon Vitality, or if I want to go ahead and Change Stick it out. Let's go ahead and try something different, I suppose. I don't know, like, like... This could go... Like, how, how often do I... I honestly, yeah, Time, Time Shadow is kind of one of my favorites. I think Change Stick is the card you should pick in this pack. There. Now that I've said that, I cannot pick it. Wow, and then we get a pack I'm really unhappy with. Uh, Reality Shift is just a very poor card. Substitute doesn't really get a lot done. It's like a, a polymorph, but you make it way too big. Plover is very poor. Um, God, there's nothing in any color in this pack. Reinforced Baton is the best card. After Image is unplayable. Primeval Plover is unplayable. Reality Shift is unplayable. Most speeds for those three. Yeah, these are all really bad cards for us. Um, like, the best ones, I think, are Baton, then Substitute, then, like, Gift of Battle. Plover is the least bad card. I think I... Plover is not the least bad card in this pack. Plover is an unplayable, like, flyer at most speeds. I think I'm gonna go with Baton, even though it's off-color. Okay. Preserver of Dualities. This is actually a really good reason to be in this faction. This card's got a lot of text, but as we've seen it on the other side of the uh, the table, uh, is very backbreaking. 
because it, it pr makes all these wisps all the time, and you can pump them for pretty cheap. So let's go ahead and pick up the Preserve of Dualities and kind of have that going on. Uh, Grave Tender, I don't like. Cerso's Choice, I don't think the Bell is where we want to be. Hair Trigger Pistol, maybe? That's not a bad weapon. This one's a lot less blank than the last one, like, like, but, like, Master of Arms and Important Reader are all real cards, but, yeah, the bell has the problem of, like, you need to be able to play spells repeatedly, and that's hard. Uh, I like Horrifying Helm. Ooh, this Wisp is bad. I'm actually gonna pick up Pensive Lumen. This is a nice, uh, this is a real nice, uh, big creature. Like, if you actually get the Tribute off, it's huge. If you don't get the Tribute off, eh. Oh, thank you for the sub smash. Uh, ooh, alright, we get a back alley delinquent, one of my favorite two drops, including, I like being able to have sabotage without having to play sabotage. Get some sheep. Uh, Berserker Elf can't block? Uh, yeah, sure, that's a, that's fine. Another Cerso's Choice, another... Sure, I'll pick up this thing. We'll, we'll kind of... Wow, Shame Bearer coming back around. Alright. Back to... We get Hideout Pistol, which is uh, not very great. The trick with Hideout Pistol is that... Uh, the no At least, sorry, in Shadow. The trick with Hideout Pistol is that the number of Gunslingers in Shadow are... Okay, good. End of the list. Like... You need to be in fire and or justice to make that function. Uh, we do have Dusk Walker, which is a strong choice for us. This is a good radiant. It has a it gets us a lot of power to be able to play some of our more uh, powerful things. We also have Rapid Shot, one of the best like tricks you can ask for. Flat. Uh, Cult Aspirant's also nice. That's about it. Near. I think Trigger Man's actually a fine card, too. Um, I'm thinking I'm okay picking up Duskwalker, see if this func functions. I'll go ahead and put away this. Infuse Strike? Now that's a trick. I think I can get behind Infuse Strike. Uh, we got the War Chief, Discipline Numenera. Silverwing Familiar is, of course, like, really, really strong, but... Outside of the, the focus of this. Torch, huh? Uh, the only card in here that it's even remotely playable is, like, Sleeping Trot. I can just pick up that torch and see if, like, maybe splashing is worthwhile. Of note, I only have four, uh, time cards, and three of them are, uh, dual faction. So, I'm fine picking up a torch here, seeing where this goes. Yeah, that Splash for Torch is never bad. All right, we get a rapid shot. That's good. Sleeping draw again. It's, it's, yeah, we can pick up a rapid shot here. Those are good stuff. Here's another gunslinger. This is not the, the the. Okay, there are. I guess there are more than one gunslinger in. in I think I'm thinking of Valkyries because there's that Valkyrie card that picks up Valkyries and that doesn't do anything in faction. Do I care about flashy duelist? It's a two drop. It's a two drop that gets things done. I have two back alley delinquents. Do I need a sabotage? I kind of like having a sabotage. Instead of the Archmaster's real poor. Let's go and pick up the flashy duelist. We have two of those. Knife Jack. Oni Ronin! What are you doing here? What is this? Is the choice a good one or a bad one? Oh, that's what you're asking. Talir's choice is by far the weakest of all the choices. Uh, in the limited, the Feln choice is worse because it's almost unplayable because it specifically asks for multi-faction cards. But Talir's choice costs two mana more than it needs to to even be playable. It's like five mana for make two one ones and gain two life is one of its options. Yeah, I'm getting a feeling that uh, 
Fire is definitely a, a real thing here. Goodness. Um... Pick up that combust, maybe? That's fine. Oh, well, now we have more combust and a hip shot. Hi, how you doing? Uh, interesting. Don't really care about much of these. Let's go ahead and take a... Alright. Let's, uh, let's shift gears, I suppose. Oh, God, hi, Unseen Commando. You're a really good card. Um, Cult Aspirant. I could pick up the Praxis Banner. Oh, Omnicrom, thank you very much for the sub. Yeah, maybe the banner is actually the pick here. Uh, we can't... Unseen Commando is too much of a far shift. That's a really strong card, but... Like, we have a couple cards in, in, in Justice. I'm not shifting that hard. So, let's go ahead and... Give ourselves the opening with the Praxis Banner. Perhaps, like, Pensive Lumen gets cut, and then, like, Preserver of Dualities and this... And Siphon are my splashes in a Stone Scar deck. Another Duskwalker, if I want it. Uh, that's probably alright. Yeah, more Duskwalker's fine. Oni Ronin? Alright. This makes me feel real good about my, my current position. Alright. Yep. You know, if I could pick just two fire cards to have in my deck... Uh, th it's these two. Right here. That's it. Those are the only cards I need to have a successful deck in fire. But yeah, here, to, to read Talir's Choice for you. Deal two damage to the enemy player, units get plus two, or gain two life, play two explorers for five at, at uh, slow. If you strike is a, a choice here as well. Yeah, too late for us to go in on Polymorph. We're already three packs in. I'm not shifting the fourth time. You need to know when to ride the waves. If you just keep shifting to the winds, you'll end up listless. Uh, summon Nightfall's fine. Sure, sure, and I'm just reacting and saying that that's not a, a, an action we can we can read into it, but we can't do anything with it. Is some of nightfall fine? It might be. It, we might need it for curve filling. We have nothing around that spot. You don't like this much. We have like one weapon to pick up. It's just the pistols, and that's it. So like reforge doesn't do much. Unseen Agent, that's fine. I'd kind of like to get a little bit more. We have Hipshot, too, if I wanted even more interaction. This card is poor. Very poor, but, like, any interaction is, is enough. I like Unseen Agent a lot, though. And we are completely out, so... Chairman's Contract. Alright, nothing we need to care about. Uh, Fiery Fisher is real... Uh, Welding Torch is fine. Um... Yeah, the thing is, Alchemical Blast is fast, and Hipshot is slow. How many spells do we have for Pyre Elemental? Uh, Torches, Combusts, Tempers... Back alley delinquents, infuse strike rabbit shot. We don't have a lot of units. We need more of those, actually, is our current issue. Hmm. Maybe that is a reason to pick up something like Pyre instead of Fiery Fissure, Welding Torch. That's an interesting idea. Let's see how that pays off. Ooh, Refracted Sentinel, if we want to get big, get big. That's that's an, an an option. Fire yeah, I have nothing against fiery finish. Right now I feel like units might be uh Cardinal hold the hip shot and not being fast is kinda dumb. Welcome to warp as a mechanic. 
Warp as a mechanic is pretty poor. You know what? Okay, I want to see how this card plays. I want to see it. Oh, do I want to see it that hard over cut ties? Hey, change check. Yeah, let's crush our opponents with damage. Let's get huge. I'm getting big. Go home. Uh, Fiery Fisher, another Pyro Elemental. All those seem fine. Uh, Territorial Elf again gives us another Berserk target. And that might be fine because we do have, like, uh, a couple, s like, Rapid Shot Infused Strikes that would work well with it. Maybe that's what I want Territory Elf for. Okay, let's 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 believe in that line. Should we draw a weapon of your choice? This card's Oh, actually Veteran Strategist lets us splash a little better. That's fine. Yeah, that's probably fine. Overheat is poor because it's not fast. That's its main issue, so. Just those choice again. Another back alley delinquent. I think I'm okay picking up more of those. Oh, there's more Gunslingers than I thought. Hey, another Territorial Elf. And a uh, War Painter, but I want more of these. If I want to go fast, let's go fast and go get moving. Blade Whirl. Uh, nope. That's not making my deck. Uh, that's, that's not gonna... Nope. Mm-mm. Uh, I don't think we many fact is fine, sure. Alright. So, we're here for aggression, we're here for the beatdown, we're here for crushing. We might not even be playing the time. We'll see. Clearly, clearly, yes, absolutely. Pyro Elemental. Back alley delinquents. Uh, flashy duelist, infused strikes. Territorial Elf's X3. Some Nightfall to get, keep us rolling. Some pistols. Yeah, maybe I don't bother with a lot of the... Let's see, how much, how much room do we have for time, I guess, is going to be the question. Not a lot. Because we could combust there. And, like... I could fill out the rest of the deck with, like, Tempers or something small. Even, like, freaking Harbinger's Bite. Just to, to keep, keep aggress, like, dealing damage. Um, uh, if we play time, I've only got two fixing pieces, and that's the, this thing here and the banner. I like the Preserver of Dualities. That thing's fine. How many more Radiants do we have? All our Radiants are the... These are our Radiants. Okay. Yeah, that's a question, ain't it? You say beef up that 4-slot, but I don't think you... You, uh... You've read the temperature of the deck when you say that. Like, Duskwalker is a 4 that gets us to 7 in a deck that doesn't have cards above 4 and wants to beat down our opponent with a lot of 2-drops and removal backing them up. Like, I don't think we want more Duskwalker-style things. It's a 4-drop that does 1 point of damage to our opponent. We can get that a lot more places, though. Yeah, I, I don't think we care. Um, I think this deck is smoking hot, and I think we need to, to play to that speed. We'll literally play the Harbinger's Bite. What's our unit count? 17. So, not as bad as you'd expect.
Ah, sunk cost is 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 uh is fake. Like, here's the trick. You like I I mentioned about riding the waves. You need to be able to know when to cut losses, you know, and and move to different colors. When we saw that torch in Oniron, and that was when we 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 stopped hard. Do we want the manufacturer or the Grenadin spell? Perhaps. <laughs> when to cut ties? We don't have the cut ties, sadly, and we can't be doing that. Uh, I, no, no, no. I, I don't mean to, to call you out or anything. I, I, I simply mean that it's a, a skill to work on. Um. I don't care about veteran strategists. My curve's so low, I want, like, two more cards in the deck rather than power. Is that just too awful? That's kind of what I'm thinking, Huzzah. Even, like... Like, I don't know for So, we're fast, certainly. Our deck is made for, for speed and beatdown. But, like, we don't aren't wide... Is the problem the only card I have that generates tokens isn't even in my deck, and I don't like manufacturer. It's really goddamn slow. Do you want to pay six mana for three Grenadine? I never do, ever. Like that's never where I want to be. Um. You need Good Inspire to want manufacture. Even with, I don't know if Good Inspire makes that card playable is the problem. <laughs> yeah, it creates them in your hand. That's the difference in the card. Uh, maybe I accept 17. I feel like 17 is, is too high for this. You do play the light them up. They'll never see it coming. Like, our curve ends at freaking 3 with one card at 5, and then this card is a free, is actually a 2-drop, right? Like, this card's fake, you know? This is not a 6-drop, it's a 2-drop. So, we don't really have... Our top end is this Blade World that's really nice with, like, Unseen Agent or Territorial Elf or Back Alley Delinquent, you know? It works really well with all of those because it functions well with Unblockable or, you know, those sorts of keywords. So let's uh let's see how the beatdown goes. I'm playing Harbinger's Bite in an Eternal Draft deck, and I think that says a lot about the quality of our deck, or I guess the the temperature of the deck. Ooh, it's spicy fast. So oh, one last thing I want to check. I added in that waystone, and then didn't actually check the the breakdown. Eight and eight. Oh, sure, you won't hear complaints from me about having owner your own and torches in the deck, but things like light them up and harbinger's bite. Not so much. All right. Let's, uh, let's make it happen. The deck is only as good as its worst cards. That's something, that's, that's something I take from Hearthstone. It's not as true in other games. In Hearthstone, it's all usually true in the arena. Uh, the difference there is that in Hearthstone games, you're a lot more likely to see a, a large percentage of your deck. Uh, you only have a 30-card deck, and you're, you're, draw, you're starting on three to four cards, plus draw one a turn. Uh, so, you, you see, in an average game of Hearthstone, you see 50% or higher of your deck, if it goes to, like, turn 10, if it actually gets to that point, you've seen 50% of your deck, and then goes up from there. Whereas in a game of Eternal, or a game of Magic, to see 50% of your deck is a very long wait. We can't keep this. 
That's five power. We can't use five power. The, we can't even play the hair trigger pistol on the unblockable. So, moving along. Yeah, we need some uh, some backup to make this work, but we get only running on one, so it's not too bad. That's nice. That's fine filtering. All right. Combos in town. How you doing? Alright, opponent is just drawing power. That's perfect for us. Though, that's poor for us. I really would love to be able to make a two drop. If we need to draw into one of our eight shadow at this point. Not the greatest of odds. Maybe I actually want to include that veteran in... Okay, I need this to be torchable on three. Together, we'll find the path. You know what? Sure, that's torchable. That's not a card I ever want to be sticking around. You are, I guess, a, a sigil. You're a legal draw. I am the beat town. Oh my god, alright. I mean, now we see uh, what our opponent was doing. I think this means I need to use back alley delinquent to, to search their hand. So we're going to go ahead and back alley delinquent. Getting rid of, I'm going to say flashy duelist. And we need to search their hand. Oh god! <laughs> okay. Worm, I've never seen Worm Calling. Well, they can't cast Worm Calling. They can't play the, I have to get rid of the training grounds and hope, right? I think that's how this works. I need to get rid of that training grounds, hope that I can get rid of the Worm Calling next turn, then get rid of the Worm Calling, and roll with it. If that line functions, our opponent only has one non- Spell card in hand, we should, we can get out of this. So let's go ahead and get rid of the training grounds. The beatdown continues. They can't cast Rampage on our unit. They don't have fire influence. So we're okay as long as they don't play time or fire. What are you gonna do? Uh, we're gonna have to get rid of Lithrai we'll Blade Whirl here. Oh my god, and they drew a torch? <laughs> Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Again, they cannot play Rampage on my unit without fire influence. That is not a legal play. There's there's no world where that is a play that they can make. Oh, goodness. Okay, so our opponent had a three-color deck that uh, ate it to the color requirements. I feel very good about that. We needed that first sabotage to be functional. The second one was unnecessary. Oh, there's a there's a promo quest. Okay, uh, plus one max power. Sure, give one of your other units plus four plus four while you. Have, oh, I really, you've got some power behind you. Yeah, they had a pretty slow off start, and we took advantage of that. Even though we were off color, the fact that we drew that shadow right when we did was very game changing. I'm very glad about that. And even if they could, had to like cast rampage on our unit to to break, like we 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 were getting there. Even like one worm wasn't going to stop me from going wide at that point with like our opponent at eight. So it's a soul bond unit, basically. That's how the general genetrix feels. Plus four, plus four is huge. And like I guess standing back and giving plus one power is kind of nice. I don't know. That's an interesting card. I like the little promos they give out just as time goes on. They give out promos for, like, win of the day. It's a nice thing. So, yeah, hopefully we'll keep things rolling. Again, we are the beat down, and we have to know that we're the beat down. At no point can we make... Like, there's, a, there's an incredibly old magic article. Incredibly old at this point. Called, titled, Who's the Beat Down? 
And it's a, a, a very important concept to understand. Uh, this is absolutely perfect. I get to play Territorial Elf on two. And, like, maybe Back Alley Delinquent on three. We got some damage. I could get in for six if things are open. Yeah, that seems great. Let's keep... Knowing... Um, which side of the coin are you? Are you the player who is trying to kill your opponent or are you the player trying to stay alive and that's really the question you have to ask yourself when you're playing all right so let's get this territorial elf down yeah i like that article because if you're an aggro deck fighting another aggro deck you might still not be the beat town that's an important thing to know is deciding and the, the, the question, the reason you ask who's the beatdown, is uh, to ask, like, which one of you, which player, out of you is the faster deck? I'm going to go ahead and grab a Sabotage here. Oh, I feel really good about this, because I get that Linebreaker shield out of my opponent's hand. Okay. Uh, they got a lot of power on their side, and I don't like that endurance. We might need to find a Combust to deal with things. Oh, I'm sorry, let me fix the... There you go. But yeah, it is, it is an old, old as hell article. There we go, that's the sort of thing I was looking to pick up. Um... There are three colors! They actually do have a third color. Um, what's berserk here? Okay, sharpen reflexes is fine. And then we just go ahead and use infuse strike to get this out of the way. All right. So, our opponent has two unknown cards. Oh, God. All right. That's a bit of an annoyance. Uh, we don't have a lot of good ways to deal with Owl. Um, especially because one of their unknown cards in hand... Known cards in hand is the plus one, plus three endurance thing. So... Let's ship it back. Echo card, huh? Terax? That's generally Terax Hatchling. There's Endurance Shield, so now we need to draw into uh, Combust. That's a good draw. That might get us there. Oh, thanks, Dectalon, again. I'll finish this quickly. Yep, there's the Terax Hatchling. Charge Infiltrate. That's not going to do anything. I'll just block it. That's a neat card, though. Um, Terex Hatchling. Yep, just taking damage. That's fine. 3-3 three, three unblockable. Need to draw a Sack of Dude, Kill a Dude. Yeah, that is exactly it, Immortal Echoes. That is the card I am hoping to, to, to functionally find here. Bunch of Power is not what I was hoping to functionally find here. So, we're on a three-turn clock from their flyers, and they have another Terex Hatchling. Uh, I can just block here, that's fine. I want to save this torch. An endless rest. Sure. I can bring my opponent to seven. That's good. That's actually a really good top deck. And then any Nightfall card would win the game. Okay, that's actually a good trade-off. I think that should work out. So I attack in, bring my opponent to seven, and then next turn bring them to four, torch to one, Nightfall to zero. Huh. 
and we have a number of other draws that win us the game there too. Uh, other Torch Temper. Anything that deals one damage, and our deck is full of cards that deal one damage. Uh, alternately, I do need to stay alive in this manner. Uh, we have so many cards that allow us to deal that one point of reach. Light them up, yeah? That would be enough. Yeah, that'll do it. Dance with me. That is plus... We have so... Our deck is full of these cards that deal damage. So yeah, we may have... Our opponent may have the 5-7 Endurance, but we've got the, the unblockability. Oh, that felt really good. We, 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 we took our path, and we, we, we followed it straight to victory. Uh, I talk a lot about... Um, so, no, again, I, I I've talked about Who's the Beatdown, the, the, the Mike Forrest article from 1999, as, as uh, Ben linked earlier. Um, it is an important concept, but one of the other concepts I talk a lot about in general, and I don't really have, like, a source on, on, on it, is knowing your path to victory. And I always use the term, I, I tend to use path to victory as my way to define it, in that when you're looking at a game state, you can look at the plays that keep you alive, or you can look at the plays that win you the game. I actually want to say Kai. Uh, Kai Bude was uh, is the, the, the player I can think of who talks about it more. Where if you only, if you know there's only one out to your deck, you have to play as though that will be your next draw and make, you know, plays based on that, even if it looks very poor. And in that game, we weren't making, like, poor decisions, mind you. We were just making, like, I didn't, I just didn't snap Torch a Flyer or things like that. So it's just important to know how you plan on winning a game. Now, I've, I've spent a lot of time just, like, over the years reading magic theory, and it, it, it's... It applies to a lot more than just magic. It's, it's something I like to... Have you read the book? I've not read Stephen Menindian's book about Gush. Uh, nor have I read uh, Patrick Chapin's book, either. Um, Sons is the Art of Cards. <laughs> it's kind of incredible that Gush is such a... a flexible card that it could have a full flippy flop all right flippy flop um okay i'm fine with this hand one of the things that fixes this so this is a hand that has a bit of problems but one of the things that fixes this a lot is actually the power of back alley delinquent turning temper into a better card if need be However, Temper early game can do a lot of damage. What's your impression on this game? Found it this week. Cool middle ground between Hearthstone and MTG. Learning about tech types, etc. How to build cool stuff. Cool stuff you can build. I am a big fan of this game. Uh, it is fairly easy to get into. It's, it's fairly free if with just jumping in and playing, seeing what you can do, getting away with just commons and, and free cards. It's a lot more like magic via uh, magic but looking like or feeling like ooh that's going to be a good three feeling like Hearthstone I don't play a lot of Constructed so I can't tell you too terribly much about that but I can tell you I have a lot of fun with drafting okay I need to be able to play Temper next turn it's kind of important Make no sense. oh god <laughs> why <laughs> uh oh I'm helping alright uh, where do we want to go from here then do I want to flashy duelist pass attack for one obviously then flashy duelist could try to trade off but I don't think that's the speed we are right like again I think we're the aggressor um at that So let's attack for one. Let's let's get that done. 
That's that's a that's a for sure happening play. I want to know more about our opponent. And I think I'm going to rely on back alley delinquent for that. So let's go ahead and uh, I think double shadow is real, but double fire is not. What are you going to do about it? Okay, no blocks there, that's fine. The throne must be destroyed. Okay, that is a bit of a problem. That specific card is going to be a bit of an issue for us. Let's go ahead and crush in. If I need to rapid shot, we'll rapid shot. If we don't need to rapid shot, we won't. It's as simple as that. I was actually thinking about double uh, temper as well, so... Okay, I'm gonna play this out, and we'll pass it back. I don't like the life gain here, and this is off. This is no longer night, so just an 04. Let's go ahead and ask our opponent some uh, some trading questions. They might have a tribute. That's probably the most power. The best play they could make would be Knight of Sorrow, the 4-4 that becomes a... What was that? Was that Sorrow? Is that what that was? How am I killing that? How am I killing the best card they possibly could have played in this situation, which is a 6-6 six, six with lifesteal? Going through it in my mind, going through it in my mind. Okay. We're gonna get the board going. Yep, no blocks. They gain six, which is the biggest issue here. Yeah, we have... This is sort of our deck's weakness. We don't have a lot of good ways of dealing with continuous life gain sources. Okay. Here's game plan number two. And I'm really happy about this game plan. Hit him very hard. We'll find the combust. It'll happen. So our opponent's going to 20 this turn. We can crack back pretty heavily. Um... I think we need to make this chump. That's terrifying, but they didn't put it on the most powerful unit they controlled. Okay. That could have been so much worse had they actually gone for it. An interesting choice. I'm really confused as to why they didn't put that on their Knight of Sorrow. I'm okay with it. <laughs> Trying very hard to race my opponent. 
All right, so I can actually trade with the 6-6 six, six now. With my 3-drop. Okay, no, not for long. Okay, they're up to 11. How much more do we need to get through this? Make no sense. Okay, give me extra card is nice. All right, let's go ahead and check out the sabotage. Okay, no valid cards. That's fine. Um, how are we dealing with things? What are we dealing with? Where are we winning? Definitely attacking for one. I could attack all out. I might go ahead and try that. This is unsafe. This is asking for a bit of a blowout. But I want to put my opponent on edge, and I think this is a good way of doing so. We get rid of our Reckless. Okay. So they draw two cards, go to five. We, we have to chump block so we don't die. Eight power, so many cards in hand. No spells, though. It's all units or, or power. Vanquish. Ooh, that's a beating. Uh, okay. Not a lot I can do about that. Yeah, I think this is where it ends. Sadly, we our opponent gained a, a sizable chunk off of this, and we were able to tear through most of it, but not enough of it. So I feel pretty good about our the outcome in any way, knowing that our opponent uh, has some powerful maneuvers. We could... The Knight of... Ah! Yeah. I could prevent the lifeline and come my turn by blocking and then tempering my own unit. My problem with that play on the last turn was I didn't want to give up my unblock ability. Might have been better, though. Anywho, that's fine. That's, that's, that's a reasonable outcome. Night of Sorrow is rather good. Yes, lifesteal is a very, very powerful mechanic for aggro decks fighting aggro decks. It's why I like Infused Strike so much. Uh, Infused Strike is a card that... Uh, uh, plus three, plus one, and lifesteal. It's not a card that lets you go... Like, it, it's a card that lets you go more aggressive than you'd think. Did, like, 50 damage to it wasn't enough. We, we tried. Anywho, let's move on to the next one and see how that goes. Interesting that our opponent also had the Nightfall going on. It's one of the only cards that plays well into Nightfall. We're using Nightfall in a... And I think the way the developers intended it more. Where we're using it to be aggressive and make really aggressive plays. I'm okay keeping this. <laughs> to like, because we can trade one, like we, we, you know, our opponent draws cards, but we draw cards and our cards are damage. And so is the extra card draws damage. Everything is damage. Damage is damage. Damage. Like, in almost every other circumstance, Nightfall is a, 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 uh, a negative. Something you generally don't want to be doing because it hands your opponent the advantage first. Sure, that's fine. I'm gonna play out Flashy Duelist. I'm gonna save this torch for a more reasonable target, and we're gonna back alley delinquent on the next turn. Our opponent's on three colors. So if our opponent played a Xena and Destroyer, that would be Stay alert. Real. Okay, pistol in the back pocket. Let's go ahead and check things out. Tell me what you got. Alright, that feels like a good steal. 
They didn't have any spells to trigger that, but they also don't have the ability to do it anymore. And this tells me they have a decent number of spells in their deck, so... Now, Hair Trigger Pistol is made pretty well for Back Alley Delinquent. <coughs> Makes it a 4-4 with Deadly Quick Draw. A threat well worth playing. Okay. So I think we're going to go in on that. It's going to be difficult for our opponent to deal with deadly quick draw. Our opponent needs something like a, a vanquish proper. Okay, a silence does okay. It's still a 4-4 is the current problem, which is bigger than every creature on their board. Not exactly where you want to be. All right, let's go ahead and ask them if they want to make some really, really powerful trades. Did I hear you say you don't play Constructed? I do not play very much Constructed, no. I do play Constructed in Eternal, but I generally play a lot of Limited, and that's what I end up streaming. Alright. Let's get our three for one on. Silently. Sets Constructed for me is rather greedy. Ooh, more nightfall. Beauty and purpose combined. Okay. So this here is something I think we do need to take down. I think I'm okay torturing that. And let's go ahead and attack in. And Refracted Sentinel's real nice here. Uh, the power is not terribly relevant this late in the game. And they're already on the splash. Eight, one card left in hand. Is it, If it's something big, we have Combust, so... And it looks like our opponent has figured that one out, sadly. Alright, that went well. The blowout was kind of the defining moment of this game. The, the, the infused strike blowout. Markets undo a lot of variants. Yeah, definitely. Markets play. I also played a lot of Living Wish decks and Magics around my own. Yeah, I was. I I played Glimmering Wish at times, and like Wish boards were always really exciting. So Markets are a really cool addition because I I like that sort of like secrecy on it, the, the or like that that sort of uh, uh, adaptability that your deck will have. Um, have to play Glittering Wish. Nice, nice. Yeah, it was always nice to... It, Glittering Wish was never as strong as the other Wishes. Living Wish and Burning Wish, Cunning Wish. But it got a lot done. The difference between Wishes and Markets is that the Markets are on sizable creatures that feel good. Like... The, the the Aegis one, I think, is the is really strong and hard, to, annoying to deal with. Uh, the Time one has a high toughness body and is plus power. Um, like so, in addition to being a strong wish, uh, they they are a body as well. Topeka, I think we have to take the Mulligan here. Our, our hand has one playable card and a lot of berserkers. You seem fine in this deck. Let's go ahead and redraw, see if we get maybe a playable one. <coughs> uh, I see Light Em Up is in our hand. That's nice. Okay, we need to find some of our um, back alleys so we can turn these power into... into real plays. Okay, also a temper would be really nice. Oh god, am I willing to play Refracted on three? Ha! 
Hell yes. Let's go. Top speed. High. Face my most powerful minion. You're on the play now, too. Want a card that steals something from the market? Oh, that'd be cool. A jelly mech? Kind of looks like a jelly mech, doesn't it? I think it's a... It's either... No, that's a buzzwall. Look at that. There's the big shoulders, the arms, the legs. That's buzzwall, the Pokemon. The head's there, you just can't see it, of course. But look how giant the buzzwall is. Um... If they're willing to double trade here, I'll take it. Yeah, that's what I thought. There's no way they accept it when we have this many cards in hand. Like, especially when they can't back it up with a trick of their own. Could be the big furry guy from Looney Tunes. Mm. That new Pikachu Zekrom card. I need to take a look at that. I saw that when I was... Uh, out earlier today, but I didn't get a chance to actually see how the the tag G GXs work. New Pokemon TCG stuff from Worlds. It's exciting. Fly, fly. <laughs> okay. Oh, I fixed my opponent's power, uh, drought. Here we go. <laughs> Light it up, boys! Opponent's at nine. We've got a really big body in play. Hopefully our opponent doesn't have too terribly much. We're about out of gas. Our opponent has seven cards in hand and hasn't missed, hasn't made power drops, which says that they have real cards. And they're not off color because we gave them the ability to fix. They can't be off faction. You've got a familiar face. Okay. Okay, removal spell would be the top of the line here. Let's go ahead and get in with bolt with these two though. Okay, they go for that double block. We got our own here, Oni. Okay, fifth power. How bad is it? Three three for five would be my best hope. Like some sort of flyer that's not terribly great. Lifesteal. Okay. So they can hand off lifesteal to their own unit. Let's go ahead and get in and bring them down to three into torch range. Sad we don't have the berserk there. If they did draw power, they get to lifesteal back in for three, but they have to like they have to attack for three, which still opens up the torch play. So it isn't a play that'll win them the game immediately, but it will slowly shut me out if they're able to make it. We do have two torches to draw that are just flat victories on the spot if our opponent doesn't heal here. Um, what we They're going to be attacking for four in the air, though, is the problem. Oh, goodness. Okay, more turns. That's good. Keep opening up more torch turns. That's exactly what we need. The problem is uh, this is going to get lifesteal next turn, and uh, that's kind of bad. Oh, it's not. Uh, sure, no blocks. 
Okay. All right, they didn't life steal it. Again, we just have Torch as a top deck that could win us the game. An endless rest. They really don't want a life steal. Okay, we're playing to our outs as long as we can. Again, Torch off the top is our way out at, with our opponent at three. I think they finally read their card over there. Yep, looks like they've read that card finally. We have... Sadly, Infuse Strike. Too little too late. That's not going to do it. Ah. Uh. Nothing we could we could do with how long that went. Uh, the the power flood took us out at the end. We needed some sort of action, and goodness was that not a coming. Yeah, they moused over it. That's how I figured that they they knew that it existed. That's fine. So let us move along. Sometimes those are, that is the cost of playing card game. You see, uh, there is a a concept known as variance. Uh, it's just something you, you, at least I accept into my art. Games like that will occur. I think we had a really cool early game. I don't know if the Sentinel was the, was necessary, but it was a lot of fun to have that 6-4 in play. I like that card. Let's fight against Aesthetic. This is tragically poor, and we cannot keep this. So let's go ahead and redraw. Okay, this looks fine. Temper could be good. Again, I want to see Temper do some nice, like, pinging something off, you know. Get work done. Ooh, that's a, that's a nice, better... That's a little better version of Temper. So that's good. Fire? Uh-oh, what's this got? Please don't be lifesteal. Warcry. Goodness. Willing to torch that out of the way. Three in, three out. Back alley delinquent will... Hey, there we go. Temper target. If your coin stays good. So let's go ahead and... Temper? Maybe they'll... Okay. That's fine. Um, am I willing to... Spend my torch on that. I think I am. Silently. So we've used both our torches. We've got a lot of unblockable power, though. That's nice. Hopefully, I'll be able to black alley delinquent. Kind of take a look at our opponent's hand. They're they're they don't have power. Interesting. Um, I need to play Fevered Scout before I do anything else, though, is sort of the problem. Ooh, they do have a torch. All right. And getting this Fevered Scout into play is more important, so that we can pump it and get in for more overwhelming. Uphold the Iron Fist's legacy. All right, so let's go ahead and we can back out a delinquent. Even if this misses, it'll still plus two, plus two Fevered Scout. Oh, it ain't missing. Okay. Uh, I think we want to get rid of final shot. Yeah, I'm going to get rid of final shot there. Our opponent's getting... Detain doesn't do too terribly much. Okay. And let's get Refracted Sentinel down. This will ramp them into 
you know, detaining, but it won't ramp them into quick draw, which is the more important part here. So they can put the hat on, they can attack in, but I don't think they want to make aggressive moves at this point. They're at five. Anything that looks aggressive gets them killed. There's two 1-1s one in play that have lethal coming their way. The earth. The cards in hand are, ooh, is that just lethal? No, it's not. They have a torch. Um, let's go ahead and do this. Their hand is currently one copy of Hat and an unknown drawn card. They need a way to deal with my 1-1 one -one unblockability or they lose. And they do lose. Alright. Go Go Sabotage, getting a lot done for us. I'm very happy with the way this deck is playing out. This is a, a very... Uh, I, like, this sort of aggressive deck is not one that I, I I see a lot on the other side of the table. Just kind of going back into the deck a little bit. Like, we have we very rarely see an opponent who is this, is playing to play aggressive. The Dane Hand is not the Rebuke Cat. Is Dane, yeah, it's the bad one. It's the minus six for a turn. Um, because you're... You're generally playing to go really fast. You're you're playing to in this deck, whereas a lot of decks in in draft are playing for uh, a long game. A lot of uh, like it's very you know ah, methodical advantage, and that's where we come in. Yeah, like the worm deck. Yeah. Mm. Those dragons and their eyes. Sabotage is very good. I am a big fan of Sabotage. It's one of the most annoying cards. I So, like I said, I've played a lot of Draft, but I do play a little bit of Constructed. And in Constructed, Sabotage is a card that is always a kick. Just... Sometimes it's a minor kick, sometimes it's a kick straight in the face. But it is... It can be back-breaking at the wrong time. That being early game or late game. That's the power of Sabotage, is I don't feel like it's a bad card at most stages of the game. Even if it fails to find, what that gives you is information that your opponent has nothing to stop you. Because they have no uh, non-creature uh, or power cards. Vicus, huh? Oh, I think Vicus is on the stream right now. So... Shoutouts to Vicus. If you want to see Vicus streaming Eternal, you can all go check that out over at Vicus3, twitch.tv. Uh, so, say hi. Hello. We're going to go ahead and redraw and see if we can show Vicus the meaning of aggro. I'm here to show Vicus what the meaning of aggression is today. Are you ready? <laughs> if nothing else... If nothing else, I'm going to show Vickis what aggression is. Okay, that's good. Die with honor. <laughs> All right, so Berserk, this card's very strong. Uh, units you draw get Berserk and summon Nightfall. The Nightfall means you draw into more units, and the Berserk means... Oh, boy. Alright. What sort of crushing could we employ? We have a lot of Warcry. Torrential Downpour, or it's like, would be just a flat beating here. Alright, having to go Alchemical Blast to keep uh, aggression from happening. Do we want to check that hand out? I feel like we might want to check that hand out. What are you gonna do about it? All right, give me, give me the goods. What do you got in hand? Shiver and Ariel's Kopesh. I'm gonna leave that Kopesh. Get rid of Shiver. Uh, that means they have three unknowns. Let's keep moving. Keep war crying. Absolutely not, Omni. That's that's not something that'll be happening here. We we fight with honor, damn it. <laughs> that's that's 
Ooh, lifesteal. That's a bit of a... Yo, ho, 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 ho. hold the phone. <coughs> Hello. The beatings will continue. All right. So I do need to play Back Alley Delinquent on five to make sure Ariel's Kopesh does not come down on that life stealer. That is a pretty important line here. I need to make sure this doesn't get lifesteal. And if it does, Berserk Snapper, huh? Okay. Um, let's go ahead and ask the question first. I mean... Hmm. Yeah, let's just get in there. Come to Ogre Battle Fight. Um, what are you going to do about it? So let's go ahead and sabotage away that other Aerialist Kopesh so this isn't flying in. So one card left in hand, no more Berserk. Uh, this is going to be a bit of a problem, but we are beating down real hard and have a lot of backup. So here comes the, the red snapper. Here it comes. It's on. The double snapper, and now it has double reckless. Make no sound. Oh, that's a strong berserker unit. Okay. Um. So I think my first question I need to ask to my opponent is how do they want to take six damage? Okay. Then I think that's going away. And we're going to hand off Refracted Sentinel. Hey, MC Subtle. We are having a, uh, a fight to the death against Vicus here, which I am real excited about. Paladin Oathbook. That is scary stuff. But I believe we can get out of this alive. They have to block the... Uh... Vicus, that will not save you. I'm very sorry. Anyway, good fight! Very good fight! I like the style of your deck. Oh, I didn't get to your worthy foe. I'm so sorry. But yeah, if you haven't seen Vicus, check out Vicus over at twitch.tv slash Vicus3. I look forward to seeing that match from the other side. Thanks for the match. Yeah. They didn't have a known block that saved them there. They had a... Uh, I think that's... <laughs> I think we have to pass this one. I like the double torch and temper, but this has no aggression. Uh, we have no way of keeping pressure on our opponent. If we had an Oni Ronin, this would be a different answer. But, like, yeah, these are great cards, but we can't... You know, if I just sit there and torch forever, our early game advantage is lost. So... Hmm. Now, this is a very... harsh hand to get working. We need some sort of playable creature... We have a lot of tricks, a lot of pieces. I wouldn't breathe this. I'm sorry, what is this? Fenris Nightshade. Once per turn, you may pay three to draw a card. Deals three damage to you and each cursed enemy. Oh, okay. Pay three to draw a card? Goodness. Yeah, you take that. We're not putting pressure on our opponents so they can afford that. <laughs> Hello, Adrian. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Okay, dog time is go. I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and play out the blade whirl. And next turn, we're gonna go... go heavy. As much life as we can gain back to make the clock hours. So, no blocks, we don't care. We're winning the, the race, damn it. Come step into the shadow. Okay, um, I'm gonna need to combust that, aren't I? Or rapid shot it. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! <laughs> I have lethal! Nani? Oh, that felt real nice! I was, I was expecting to have to use Rapid Shot to, like, make some trades, gain some life, make sure my clock was better than their clock, but... What if my deck has so much reach it doesn't matter? Ooh, this is nice. <laughs> yeah, one turn clock. Yeah, we upped our clock. Considerably. Turns out sometimes the two people are streaming the same game, they encounter each other. Yeah, it's it's a, it, I've I've had that happen before on Eternal. You can you can see in draft the the, the wait times are a bit lengthy, uh, so you you can end up playing against uh, within the the, the kind of group that are playing. It's it's nice. I enjoy it because it means that we you you get to put on the double show. You know, there's there's the. There's the show of the game you're playing, and then there's the game you're playing. It's it's nice. Um, I think I'm okay with this. Oh, Shugo tactic means our opponent is on aggressive red. That's a card that would have been a killer in our deck, Shugo standard. Okay, prone is on the 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 the. Uh, Eight steel. Are they gonna take the temper? If they take the temper, I can't play territorial elf. But the the, the trick here is, I think I'm playing to back alley delinquent anyway. And I'm actually going to flip my other back alley delinquent. I want that sabotage. Oh, it's fun stuff. Next turn, I might actually be playing that Harbinger's Bite. Okay, third power. Let's go ahead and check what's going on. Ah, the gift of battle! I'm not letting you have the torch. Alright, I'm gonna play Harbinger's Bite to get some cards to get to power. I realize it's like handing our opponent cards as well, but we kind of need to get to power in order to have a functional game plan. I'm glad they're not... Wait! No! 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 I wanted you to have an Aegis! Come on! You know you want it! You know you want the Aegis! What are you gonna do about it? Alright, so I know this will hit. Hey! Final shot! <laughs> That's a good hit. So our opponent has Gift of Battle to hand off Berserk and a couple other unknowns. Alright, let's move along. Aggression is continuing and we will go ahead and play yeah, Duskstalker.
I don't understand stuns in this game. Sometimes they last a while, and sometimes they do not. Uh, the way stuns work is that they, they last until two turns later on your turn. Up your turn, So they can take a while to, to kick in, as it were. And we're just slowly being the beatdown here. All right, foul turn. Beast, foul, beast. foul beast! Foul beast! The beasts betray me. But yeah, stun lasts for... So say I stun this unit on my turn. Their turn, it'll be stunned. My turn, it'll be stunned. Their turn, it'll be... Uh, it'll, it'll, it'll come back after two turns of stun. There's little pips in the corner. However, there are cards that are like permafrost that permanently stun. God, I like having all the Berserk here. What does our opponent have? They don't have interaction, they don't have power, they don't have creatures. What's left? Wait, what, what, what do you actually le have left? Oh god, you had to play Shugo Standard, I'm so sorry. As long as this curse is that run out, that does not run out. That will not run out, it'll keep going. Or like a card that says stunned during night. What? Oh, they get to play the pyre elemental. Alright. Y'all ready for this? Berserker! Oh, Vickus, thank you for the host. Really enjoyed that game. Hey, we reached gold. That was some that was some good eternal. Alright. And that is our seven and two. Get up to gold rank, get our seven and two. We had some incredible crushing going on yeah this is i guess for 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 your reference here here's what we're we're playing with uh the beatdown as it were nice as practically as budget stone scar aggro deck yeah very much so our curve ended at three with one one exception and then one card that's a fake two like the delinquents and the elves were really nice. Alright, let's go ahead and uh, claim our prize. Oh, nice! 5 3 is very good. Honest to God, reality shift. Oh my goodness. That's incredible. Yep, made in call. That's not really anything. I love impending doom. Hourglass armadillo with several endurance units. Ooh. Alright, anywho, I did say we were going to be going for two drafts if time permitted, and, well, time permits, so... Let's go ahead and jump right on in and see if we can uh, maybe go a different direction. Have things go on. So we'll go for draft two here. Start things right up. Ooh, Dashing Raph Scallion. When Dashing Raph Scallion attacks, she gets plus two. Oof, uh, that's dangerous. So that plus two does not have a duration, by the way. Plus two, end of line. Oh, thank you for the bits, that was a demo. Seven five attacker for six, but... Berserk. It can double strike, much like my elves. I think that's a good direction to go in. 
what if we have a different sort of kill deck from last time? Well, like, the thing is that even if we ended up in a Stone Scar deck with Dashing Around Skelly, I think we'd end up being a different one. This is some good top end. Let's see where this leads. Whenever you play a unit, it deals one damage to the enemy player. Knight of Sorrow. Wait, that was one of the cards that beat us out. <clears throat> um, Workshop Tinker. Staff of Speed. Though Praxis is not in a great position. Pop it in there for 16 burst damage. Knight is very, very good. Yes, I agree with everybody who's saying the Knight is a strong, strong pick. Um, I don't know if that's certainly what we want. There's obviously, you know, if I, if I want to go, uh, like with removal, I have Fiery Fissure. I have Scattershot Ot as a way to give myself reach. Uh, Workshop Tinker is a nice card that plays pretty well as well. Like, there's a number of directions to go. I'm kind of intrigued to play with Scattershot. I have this card ranked pretty low, myself. But the fact that it can auto-infiltrate means that we can build a little differently. And perhaps that's a direction to go in. So, I think I'm okay picking that up and seeing where it leads. I'm always, I'm always willing to try new things, you know? <coughs> Ooh, uh, hmm... Well, that's a bad way to give plus two to Dashing Rough Scale and the, 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 the winning hit. Uh, Graceful Calligrapher is another good one. I actually like Scavenging Spikeback as well. This is a very, very good... Um, like, this is, this is a very strong uh, tribute card. One of the few very strong tribute cards in ours. Attack for 20 of the air, you say. Encouragement's problem is that it is is a not a fast spell. It is just a spell. And that's sort of its issue. I am not super... That's why I didn't auto-pick it. If that was a fast spell that you could use as a trick or to fly, I'd be all over it. It's not hellaciously overcosted. Hmm. All right, I'm not going to commit myself to... Okay, Shugo Standard is just the card I want. There's nothing else in here on the same level as Shugo Standard. Shugo Standard will give Dashing Earth Scallion plus two force or Overwhelm, and we'll go to town. So that's a good place to be. Ooh! Then Living Example and Lathrai Target Caller show up. Now that's a direction... I like Lathrai Target Caller more than I like Living Example in the deck we are building. I think that's actually the thing. So, no, that, did Living Example used to be a 2-2? Two -two? No, that was a 2-1. Um, okay, I think it's important to show off how different two Stone Scar decks can be. We're still going to be backed up by the power of uh, Back Alley Delinquent for sure, but, you know. Discard for Temper, Abduct. Alright, so we're just going to go ahead and pick up things here. Let's see how pack two looks for us. There's Oni Ronin to get things going aggressively. Even if our deck does operate at a different tempo, Oni Ronin's never going to be bad for us. But yeah, well, Thry Target Caller is an interesting... Uh... Sleeping on the Sky Crew? Yeah. That was a very late Sky Crew. I agree with you. But I, I think I have decided I want to show off a different style of Stone Scar. So we have Oni Ronin, we have Recycler, which is a pretty cool card as well. <coughs> and we have uh, Tinker Overseer. I'm going to go ahead and go with the Oni Ronin. Ooh, Stone Scar Banner. A couple cards in here that are powerful enough to play, but Stone Scar Banner keeps our mana going. Torch? Torch just flat. Look, maybe sometimes the deck is the, decks are the, deck is the same. Maybe Dex is the same. I don't know. 
I don't make the rules. Ooh, unpredictable outlaw. We could also infiltrate that, but... Unpredictable outlaw is a nice one. Ooh, more... More like gunning. That's an interesting direction to go. More gun down. Or like, sorry, or we could pick up gun down here as well. More unseen agent, but I kind of want to go, like, maybe with the, the gun downs. Let's pick that removal. That's real nice. Un more unpredictable outlaws, sure. Hey, hey, here we go. We were looking for a payoff card for Iceberg Shat Scattershot, and this is a card that definitely is a payoff card for Iceberg Scattershot. Because you'll play this, Scattershot says deal of damage, Infiltrate goes off. Ooh, Recycler? Sure. Even over Umbran Coaxer, I'll take the Recycler. Alchemical Blast is pretty real. Okay. Extinguish, which is pretty real. Recycler number two. God, Peacekeeper's Prod is expensive. I like operating with Extinguish. This is good removal. So is Into the Furnace. That gets things done. Scrap Hound is good, too. I like Extinguish more than I like Gun Down number two. I think I like Gun Down one over Extinguish, but I think I like having one of these. Ooh, now this is a card I'm always happy to have around. Zedon Destroyer does some dumb garbage. I love the card. Like, that's a card that we can power up with some, some sort of, like, tricks, like our... our Recycler power and just go to town. Maybe quick draw with the, the target caller. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm in. Um. God, we even have a Stone Scar banner to make it work. So here's the cool thing about um, Champion of Chaos. Overwhelm Deadly. If we hand off the Quick Draw, it's over. I'm going to go ahead and pick up a Scrap Hound over this Fevered Scout, too. Life Caller's fine. Ooh, that's a card I'm real happy to have as Dark Return. Again, I think this deck is operating on a different level. A different axis than our... Yes. Granted, Acolyte is a card I really wanted to go with our Outlaws. I don't think Quartermaster is us. We'll take Devour. Thorn Beast. Ooh, Thorn Beast is real big. And we get the Spark Pot anyway. All right. What is this card? When we play a... Sp oh, this is that constructed absolute pile of... Oof, uh, that's a very strong constructed card, if you've not played against that thing. How many scrap pounds could we have had? Some. Not a lot going on here. Manufacture is not very good compared to where in our previous deck, because we don't have combusts. Umbrin has... No wisps. None. There's a couple radiants, but no wisps for this Umbran. Which is a bit of a beating. I think we might be the speed for this card. We're not the speed for that card, that's for sure. I also think we're probably fine. That's not a wisp I want to play, by the way. Cut ties. This will get things done. Ooh, Ruination Sledge, which is a card I'm a big... Ooh, another Target Caller, though. Oh, versus a Spore Breath, which is pretty good removal. 
I don't think there's a speed for Transmogrifier, and I agree with you. I kind of want another target caller, because our deck is a deck that has a ton of units that are really, really good with Quick Draw. Umbran Coaxer gets so much better with Quick Draw. Yeah, I think this is a card that our deck depends on. Hey, we get a Spore Breath again, or a Flame Fang Charmer, which we can immediately infiltrate. I think we want the Spore Breath. We can make that work. Won't be pretty. Ooh, hey, Ruination Sledge. Thank you. I think I'm okay picking up a Scare. Alright. And I think from here, we're... We're kind of nearing the end. Pick up a Banished Umbrin. Another Ruination Sledge. That'll do just fine. This is a fine card to play, by the way. Wow, last pick, Fiery Fissure. Hoof, uh, all right. Let's see how Stone Scar the second for, works for us. So, Oni Ronin, Drifter, Torch, Scrap Hounds, Barbarian, Ruination Sledges, Outlaws, Spark Butt, maybe, War Painter, maybe. Then Dark Return, Delinquent, Target Callers. I don't know if that's actually something I want. Maybe it is. Thorn Beast, that, that, that. Alright. And then we got these as well. So! Our deck is actually one we'll have to cut down. I, wanna, I just wanted to put everything in that I thought was playable first, then we're going to cut down second. Uh, and I'm going to go pull the Shugo Standard out. So, <clears throat> how are we on interaction? Do I need to be playing Alchemical Blast? Do I need to be playing that sort of effect? Or can I get away with just the Fiery Fissures and the Gun Down style effects? Probably. I can probably cut a little bit of my, my top end interaction. Maybe Fiery Fissure itself. Though that can be four to the dome, which at the end of the day is real. Uh, Iceberg Scattershot only has one real card to function with. So I'm not really happy with it. I'm also not a big fan of Spark Bot, but I'd be okay playing it. So I think if we get rid of, like, Alchemical Blast, if we get rid of... Maybe War Painter? I don't know if I'd rely on this card. I don't like an 4 that has no effect. Uh, Drifter's a fine cut as well. I think we have enough ones, and we don't have a lot of, like... I think that'll be okay. Uh, I like our twos a lot. Unpredictable Outlaws work well with these, plus the uh, Granite Acolyte. Uh, Ravenous Thorn Beast is fine, is okay. Sparkbot is interesting. I think our deck can use the 1-1 one -one it makes for free, so I want to believe in that. Flying Helm. Could cut this out. I don't know if I want to cut both... Scrap Hounds. I think they're a really strong card. <sighs> but you're probably right. We only have... We don't have a lot of Grenadines. It's all on the Sparkbot. And maybe that's a problem. Like, we only have the Sparkbot as the real thing to sack to him. I probably shouldn't be as attached to him. I think that's the main issue. Okay, how about this? How about we cut this out? Go back to the cards. And maybe put back in things like... We'll try out the War Painter. Mm-hmm. 
I don't actually know if Caleb's Intervention is the kind of card I want in this deck. I don't think it is. Alright, let's go with this. Let's go with what we got here. 7-7 seven, seven split. And we'll see how a different speed of deck can function for us. I feel like our big card today should be this target caller. So. And perhaps this is the wrong speed, but it could be the right speed. We'll see. We'll find out together. That's why I do these. That's why I enjoy them, actually. It's one of the parts I enjoy the most out of them. What was your power count? Uh, was that 17 with a uh, Chugo? Eight, no, 18 with the Shugo. I'm pretty pretty sure it was 18. Kept with the Shugo as power 18. Caleb's Intervention being slow is his biggest problem. It has to be, though, because if Caleb's Intervention was fast, its plus 2, plus 2 Overwhelm mode would be so much better than, like, every other combat trick that isn't named Finest Hour. It would have to be, like, plus 1, plus 1 in Overwhelm instead. Because it's such a good trick. Plus two, plus two, overwhelm at fast? For one? Oh. Alright. Minnow. <coughs> Alright, I think I'm okay with this. We got Curve, Ruination Sledge to put on that Xena Destroyer. I'm okay with this. Let's keep it up. Don't know if I actually want the temper. Hi, Manic. Alright, I think I am willing to... Eat, steel. eat a power. Let's get a temper rolling. So, will Minnow repeat the last time we saw Minnow around? I don't know. Hiya! We'll just go in for two. Yeah, I figured that's the most likely outcome was two in, two out. And we get the throne must be destroyed. Maybe we get a hammer on the throne must be destroyed. Make no sound. Oh, okay. So they're going to get a two for one in some way. Interesting. That's a that's an incredible block to the play we just made. I think we want to save the Ruination Sledge. So I'm going to use the Temper for it. They know we have this. Hopefully we'll draw into power to get Umbran Coaxer down. Perhaps we'll be able to use that to control. I don't like... I'm not... Okay, I do like this. Problem is we have no pressure on our opponent. Yikes. That's, that's... No. No. No, they're gonna plus one, plus one and scout? No! Oh, jump kick. Wow. Alright. What did you say? Don't do it. Okay, jump kick's a lot better for them to have spent than plus one, plus one scout. Ooh, they have a third color. Interesting. Anyway, this bird's a 1-1 one, one now that I have a unit, which is nice. But this card is very powerful, the Herald of the Parliament. Look, the bird knows how to how to rider kick. That's just how it works. I don't make the rules. Alright, I'm gonna fiery fissure here. And get in with our Desperado to kill off Owl. Unless they have a Lightning Strike. Okay. So yeah, free Grenadine. That's nice. <laughs> Is it the throne must be destroyed? Is that what's coming back? Nice plays. 
Okay, maybe they get owls. I'm okay with them getting more owls. I think we can fight owls down. I've got a clear shot from Oh, that is a I've got a clear shot from here. Mm, okay. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Yo, that scares me. Huh. Really wish I would have drawn a sixth power to play this cut ties on the double block. I'm going to go heavy in. If they double block, they double block. If they don't, we, we just play the little Grenadine. Yeah, this is an uncommon. It's very powerful. Your unit's wielding weapons are deadly, and this is also a 2-3 flying war cry, which is something I will play as a 1-1. One, one. Nice! Oh my god. Uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and eat that, I suppose. Having a thorn beast looking nice. Okay. I'm going to get rid of that. I could get rid of the 1-1 the one, one flyer that could make a 4-4 four, four flyer, but I could just kill the 4-4 four, four flyer as well. Okay, that's their whole turn, which is nice. I'm very happy about this. If that's their whole turn, we're in a very good position. If they have another sleeping draw, I suppose. That's a nice... This might be a chump block. This is probably... Alright. Let's go ahead and get down. Step into the shadow. The shadow. The shadow knows. God, they have a lot of war cries. That's terrifying. I think it's four at this point. Yep, big dog. <laughs> All right, put them to two. So that was all three of their four war cries. Uh, they're gonna have to like play their four four and probably not attack. Is the most likely outcome, and then hopefully unpredictable outlaw just gets them by exhausting a blocker. Honk dog. Honk 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 honk. honk. Thinking of that fast honk video now. I'm gonna show you a fast honk. Yo, all right. Oh my god. All right. And? Just keep moving. Kablam! <laughs> Thanks, Snowballs. You did it. <laughs> so yeah, the scatter shot does uh, does the damage uh, as well. That's a good hundredth yeti. So yeah, our opponent had some really strong cards, but like, I kind of wonder about their faction choices. It's like having like I feel like their 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 stone scar was really really impressive, but they didn't have too much going on past like like I don't know like were they in primal for reasons of comparable power? Because like we saw a little bit, but not like we saw guard dog. We saw um, like uh, the the shield. I guess the shield's a reason to splash. Sure. Okay, I actually accept the shield as a splash. I love that card. The two three flyers, the 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 the, the Valkyries are really really strong. Darkstalker two. I don't think Darkstalker is a reason to splash Primal though. It's a good card. I guess maybe they actually were in three factions total. 
I believe they had a strong deck. I believe in our opponent. We fought Minnow in the past. They they know what's up. They're 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 they, they, the hell they they got me with a jump kick. A jump kick. Check it out. Alright. How's everybody doing this weekend? Sorry, I guess beginning of the weekend. It's been a, 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 a long week for me. I haven't done much on Wednesday, Thursday here. And it's just been Arc Welder. Alright. Just been a long one. So I'm happy to, to, to finally be here at the end. Let's go ahead and redraw for faction choices. Yep, that certainly happened. Oh, this is going to be a difficult one. The throne will not fall. Million one uh, factionless hand into a different factionless the hand. Progress. There we go. Thank you, Recycler. You get things done. No, thank you. Not falling for that. Ah, here it is. Yikes. All right, so let's go ahead and play the standard. Steady archers. Lego exhibition in a mountain garden thingy. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, no blocks here. That's going to be fine. Shadow. A world to build. Okay. Go on this. Yeah, evasive creature is a good choice too. So we need seven for our welding torch. Together, we'll find the path. <clears throat> hmm. Ooh, the Parma. That is dangerous. I don't have a way to. I guess I have to ruination hammer that off. That's okay. So no blocks. Ruination hammer that away. It's got a lot going on. It's very dangerous, I feel. Okay, maybe a tribute play here. Okay. Just don't look down. Need to take care of that before it gets to be. Steady Yo, that's danger. Okay. Just keep moving. Eat steel. So we got quick draw online. I need a seventh power to torch the Valkyrie, so I don't, you know, die. Our opponent is playing Inspire. Safe travels, friend. Also, this is the power of living example, by the way. Oh, there's Torch. That's nice. And they figured out that they can all out us. Um... I 
think we go like... So? Ah, uh, no. I don't like any of my blocks there. I mean, obviously there are ones that let me live, but there aren't ones that let me win. That was a mistake on the blocking, but... I'm out of that one. Dang, living example's very good. I'm sitting there thinking, I'm like, oh, do I just take this hit and then I just take three instead? It's like, oh, wait. Hmm. That's not, that's not the choice you make. But yeah, that, that's the power of us being a little bit off faction early. We needed to be on the front foot. Yeah, I did have to live at one, which was a block I considered. But, like, I looked at that and it's like, oh, I lose my entire board for that. I don't like that, so... <laughs> I made the block that results in me dying, which is, uh, not optimal, I'll say. Not optimal. There are definitely more optimal uh, actions to be taken at that juncture. Uh, all right. Chicken parm, ah. Noodles. Ah, uh, this is an automatic mulligan. We we can't make this one fa one power hand function. Even with the torch. Like, if we... It's close. Oh, now this! Welcome to my constructed deck, opponent. <coughs> I'm so sorry. Oh my god. Uh... Like this is my this is a constructed opener. Eight steel. Sure. Wow, you're a throne warden. That's nice. So temper can kill this off. Nah. Temper can no longer kill that off. Okay, second faction has arrived. Do they have a 3-3 three, three charge? No. Vanquish! Alright, that'll get things done. I'm here to deal damage. The Vanquish was a very good play by them. Very good, very, very good play. My sword is yours. Okay. Your sword, Jito. If they're chump blocking, they're blocking with their their most valuable unit. <clears throat> so the reason I, I left their their flyer on, on tap there is because I want if they want to chump there, they need to spend their best unit. They're at five. We have four points of burn in the pocket. That's an interesting strategy. Oh my god, our opponent's us. So they have to chump, they go to four, and we have four points of burn in the hand. So this is the turn, they have to do something. Let's just blast them. Yeah, the reason I used Gun Down over the that spell is because Gun Down can only hit a, a unit. Fiery Fissure can go face. 
The battle skills. Yeah, our opponent did not have the fifth power, sadly, for their uh, Throne Warden. They discarded either, so... It's a poor obliterate, but it gets the job done. At the end of the day. Oh, this has been a good stream. I've been feeling this real hard. We're just in different the, different types of stone scar night, you know? That's a that's a place to be. What an opener. So I think at some point this weekend I'm planning on doing some like Aria Sorrow randomizers at some uh, over the weekend, and I might do some of the Hearthstone uh, Puzzle Zone. I haven't checked out the Puzzle Zone at all in Hearthstone, and so that might be a worthwhile stream. I don't know how much time I'd need for that, but I figure it'd be worthwhile to 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 show that off. I've shown off almost all the other Hearthstone zones, and Puzzle Zone is is, is its own unique uh, flavor. All right, tricks fly. <clears throat> well, sometimes you get those hands that you just automatically know are a mulligan. That's a pretty easy one. Okay. This is fine. A little more defensive. Not sure why they give you one to six power. Yeah. Cause like, what's a six power hand that's like keepable Stay in a lot of instances, you. right? I've kept a one power hand. I've done that. Your sword, Jito. I'd rather not have spent my nightfall kill spell there there's going to be more valuable targets for that but we don't have a way of killing that and it can hit through my dragon's flame. Not every weapon needs a blade. Oh dear, our opponent is in a, 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 a scary position. Interesting. Just keep moving. Now, I don't know much about the hidden MMR, I just know that I like playing draft. Go for a kill spell. Ooh, Ruin Hammer. Um, I'll go for the, I'll go for this. No, they have to have a, a trick. There's no reason. Let's not be foolish here. Maybe they overwhelm. Oh, they could overwhelm and hit me for a billion. Do it. Crush my body. It'd be really good. Okay, Dark Return for Granite Acolyte. And then play Granite Acolyte, Sword on... Really thankful to have cut ties right now. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Your sword, Jito. Your sword, Jito. And then they attack me for, uh, I don't know, at 20? 
20 looks good. Do you have an instant? You don't have an instant, I don't believe you. Uh, oh, that doesn't work, because we only have one unit in the grave. I can dark return that unit. Um, hmm. How about this, actually? How about... Just keep moving. Your sword. We make a two four. Sure. What does our inspire do? Plus one power on our draws. I'll trade acolyte for acolyte. Yeah, I'm blocking there. That ain't worth it. Oh, it's time. Catch me if you can. Hello. So I'm willing to break the uh, break that open. Uh, it gets me more things for my spore breath to function, which is what I'm after there. I want their blocks to look poor. Oh, somebody's in a danger town mood, huh? Rally's not a card in, the, in this format. For the last time, draw your weapon. That's like Rally. It's adjacent to Rally. Sure. How many units are in my void? You can feel them beneath the stone. I don't believe you can kill me with two cards. You might be able to. I don't believe you can, though. The, the Desperado Scattershot move was my final maneuver as well. What happened there? Uh, the final maneuver... Our Yeti... Uh, our Yeti here is whenever you play a unit, including itself, it deals one damage. The uh, Desperado has Infiltrate, which is whenever it deals damage, do a thing. <laughs> that's, that's so sad. Desperado. Sure, I'm fine with this. Okay, I can overpower that. So our, our Desperado here... If it, it deals... Oh, I don't like this. Why? 
What did you say? When it hits the opponent, it kills a unit, which makes this a, sort of a chump blocker. I'm going to torch this living example for three damage to get it off the table, though. It gives each of their draws the plus one, plus one that we don't really Stay need to right. see. Okay, so here's our play. Hammer down. Get in. Because that has three toughness, they'll need to double block, and our torch will take out their 2 1 first. And if they let it through, they'll lose their, their 2 4. So this is all in our, our, our bet. Oh, chump block that way. I'm still willing to kill this. Again, I don't want their draws to have plus one, plus one. We can use Fiery Fisher to force through Desperado. Ooh, a third faction. What do they have? They've just shown time so far, right? The throne must be destroyed. Okay, come on, fifth power. That ain't doing it. All right, so that has to attack. No blocks. That's fine. Spore is not fast. It is just a spell. Okay, there's fifth. Is there a way through there? Could blast the Seeker, then attack in. They have to double block. They'll draw a replacement card. We'll lose Desperado. We'll get the Overwhelm from the Fix-It. Only the single block, huh? Okay. I thought they were going to take the doubler there. That's good for us. Oh, I don't like the Echo. That's probably the 2 1 flyer. That's the most common. Maybe they just don't want my fixer to go off. I'm really happy to get up to 6 for Raph Scallion. Safe travels, friend. Okay, and then they have a 2 1 flyer to follow. There's the Terex hatchling. So we'll kill off their lifelink. Steady archers. And kill this. What does Recycler do? If any of my other units dies, I get a 3-2 weapon that pumps a unit with to overwhelm as well. Okay. That's not too bad, because this has a, a thing on it. So if they polymorph this, it's not so bad. It'll still be a, 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 a big 4-2. Because the frog can still carry the hammer. Frog hammer. Frog hammer. Attack me. You don't win this race. Nice. The quick draw on here means it hits first. So we can attack freely into that. And our opponent's final card in hand is known. It's a uh, Terex Hatchling. So... They can double block this. And probably should. Okay, 
All right, that's fine. Just keep moving. So we're just going to try to race them down 19 v 18. They've only got two power to my eight. What are you going to do about Um. Am I okay letting my opponent sabotage me? Choose not to. What? Really? Catch me if you can. All right. Our opponent has sabotage and some unknowns. They're going to sabotage away my devour. Together, we'll find the path. Or maybe they won't think I have anything. That's going berserker. So the berserker lets it attack twice, and it gets two power every time it attacks. So now it's nine, and that's a permanent nine. Okay, uh. let's run past some... <coughs> some sigils. They need to have a way to kill that 11 power unit, and they do not have it. All right, excellent. That puts us up to four wins. We only need three more or two losses to to, to finish this off. Guess they were playing around something. I don't know. They had that sabotage for about three turns from their quick draw unit, but didn't really do anything with it. Like, I had free openings to play it as well, but, like, maybe they thought the card in my hand was not sabotageable, so they weren't willing to play it. That's all right. Anyway, on to the next one. Yeah, as I've mentioned before, if you ever have any questions about what's going on, I'm always willing to, to, to give my thoughts on why I make the plays I do. I always try to, to make sure that, you, you know, you know as much as I do. Yeah, they couldn't afford to be greedy there because, like, they they were behind on the board, like, eight power to three. And, like, they, they had the evasion, sure, but they weren't winning. They needed to, to, to knock something good out of our hand, especially because, like, if they, if they had played that sabotage at any point earlier in the game, that would have got one of some of our real removal. All right. Chukelos. Um, I'm okay with this. Again, the target caller is one of our key units in the deck. It means that anything we draw gets quick draw, so it wins on the attack. Uh, and we have, like, a number of things I'm willing to throw away to recycle air, and we get a bit of an aggressive line. This gets to play be our play on turn two, this on three. This isn't abnormal. Oh, please hit me. Thank you. Okay, so they got rid of two cards off my deck, which you might think, like, oh no, Jens, you've lost two units. Really powerful ones, right? Well, we have cards in our deck that care about our graveyard. Dark Return lets us pick up units from the grave. Spore Breath gives minuses equal to the number of units in our grave. They've done us a service by playing this. So thank you. Thank you for the assistance. What are you gonna do about it? Okay. That? I'm fine with them having the sabotage. I do And we get the quick draw on that. I do not agree that that's a good one drop. I don't think this one is very strong at all. If you target yourself, like maybe that's fine if you have a deck built around it. Well, it ain't killing me in 25 turns. They didn't attack. 
It's going to take a lot longer than that. So Sabotage whiffs, which is really good for us. Uh, that means they're minus a card. That's an 0 for 1 in our favor. A plus would do again. Whoa, they do have a mill deck going on. What do they have that wants things in the grave? Dark Wisp, Seen in Life Speaker. Interesting. Just keep moving. Are they mono shadow? Sure looks like it. That's five cards of shadow. It's nighttime. There's a one drop that gets rid of the top creature of your opponent's deck, not two creatures. Um, I'm actually going to do this. So the reason I want to sack this unit to draw some cards is because that triggers the fix-it to get our weapon, but also draws us some cards and, like, keeps us forward moving. Ooh, ooh, here we go. I blooded. Check it and see. Just keep moving. So temper. We got some strong just pings, and I can hand off the the dashing rough scaling has quick draw now, which means again when it attacks, it deals its damage before the opponent's blockers, which gets out of control fast. Oh goodbye. That's fine by me. Plus three, minus one. That does kill it. Oh no, the ambush. But it doesn't have a lot going on here. Not very impressed. They might have a cut ties. They call to me. Yeah, this is a very poor uh, card stats wise. Hello. Now, is their final card in hand cut ties? It's kind of the question I'm asking. Cut ties just would let them kill it straight. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take that too. I don't want to be on the other end of this. There's no point in letting them have uh, anything else going on. All right. Fix this up. Let's get in there. Berserk in there. Here comes 10 power. Overwhelm means it tramples over. So 2 plus 8. Yeah. We're, we're going to be moving on in. They do need some sort of cut ties removal. And that'll make them uh, in sort of a, a uh, fixed position to us. Like they'll be pretty close relatively if they can go ahead and kill this. The problem is I do not believe they have the ability to. <laughs> Then it comes in for another 12, following that up. So yeah, our opponent's running low on resources. They need something that answers this specific card now, because it's going to be attacking for 14 next turn with Overwhelm and Quick Draw. The beatings will continue. Goodbye. All right, that puts us up to five and one. We have two wins or two losses remaining. I'd be very happy if we could get two seven win drafts. That'd be that'd be a good way to to have the stream go tonight. Yeah, the life game from Sorrow Shroud is is a little. is a little too late. They seem to be very mono shadow, which has the advantage of like you never are off a faction. Like you don't need to have drawn your 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 fire, you know, to your red to, to make things function, but it did mean that their card quality was not nearly as strong. They seem to be kind of hard up. King Bear. Alright, King Bear. Let's make it happen. This looks good. I kinda like this. 
You can play Unpredictable Outlaw with a sledge in. Oh, Echo. Uh, that's, again, probably the Pterix Hatchling. It's the most common card for, for that to be. Just keep moving. So let's crush on in. Okay, I'm actually going to wait on the Ruination Sledge. Because I want to... Because when I play a weapon on this... Oh, dear. I should not be waiting. Strength be with you. I probably should be pushing harder into this. Stay alert. Okay. Watchful Amonero. Let's go ahead and get that out of the way. <laughs> Nothing. Interesting. What do you have? What's up your sleeve? What what could that be? You you clearly have a card. I believe you have a card. Okay. Well, that's got a That's fine. That's what we have torch for. Ooh, deadly, huh? Hey, you're looking real exciting here. All right. Let's go ahead and hot-blooded. Discarding. Umbrin. Because we can pick it back up. Temper that. Get in there. I don't want a dark return because I want Spore Breath on. Do they have the big uh, knockdown? One of the best plays they could have here would be the five cost killer. Okay. Well. Let's get in there with the Berserker. Oh my god. Put him to one! Bam! So it wasn't Echo, it was the Snowball. Yep, at the end of the day it was... I, so I said the most common thing was Terex Hatchling, but there are a couple other cards it could be that weren't Terex Hatchling. Anyway, this could be the final game, or we could lose two. Let's find out. The beatdown. Sadly, they didn't use the snowball to just deal the final point of damage. That's the most killer play, is to, to pelt yourself in the head with the snowball. It's a nice way of going about things. It's being a, but snowball, I think, describes how we played... We were very snowball-y in how our game played out. I just went heavy in on one unit, and it just went just right down the hill, crushing everything through its path. Again, as I said, a different style. The good style, fun style. Hey, Blazing Blade. We are 6-1. and one. We are trying to see if we can get our, our seventh win on the second draft of the night. If you're interested, this is the second draft, so we did have a first one before that that showed off the power of aggression. Oh, and also, thank you for the sub, Earth Inspire. Oh, my goodness. Wait, Earth Inspire, did you, did you steal my second emote? Ooh. Yeah! <laughs> Thank you very much. I hope you enjoy my really, really excellent second emote. Oh, thank you very, very much. Please enjoy it. I'm going to redraw this hand because this is a one-lander with nothing to do. Oh, 
Okay. Poor. Good to use some more work. Like the scatter shot, but yeah, we we had a great game. Uh, uh, Vicus and I had a, had a really really good. Thank you so much for sharing no fits ice level tweet. It's a good one. It's a real good one. Ooh, okay. I'm sorry. Was that a? I'm sorry. What is this? What is this constructed like level of things going on here? I don't I don't know. I'm feeling a little uh, like. Tugging at collar at the power of my opponent's deck at the moment. You can do this. No. Eric keeps tugging directly at collar. Uh oh. Is our opponent the beatdown? I don't get the most power off the board. Show me your trick. No, no trick. All right. Hold them off. <laughs> Steady archers. He's in a lusty. Okay. Hold it. Hold. Hold the line. Here we go. Ref scallion down. All right. What you got, Frando? More Aegis Yeti. Oh, dear. Dangerous. Um. Entrapment? Oh, all right. Let's go ahead and devour that. Okay, so this is a really, really good draw here. The Grenadines block off these really nicely. <laughs> uh, so the reason I want this dead is the fear of weaponry. If I leave this around, there's a lot of weapons they can play off the top that make things look really poor for us. Alright, they probably play some sort of big tribute? No, no big... Hello. It's me. Stone Scar isn't a place for the weak-hearted. Hello. Deadly overwhelmed quick draw, huh? Okay. You don't want to make my I did make the correct call splitting up my damage there. I stand ready. I say we gun it down because I'm holding the the cut ties. So we don't let them have the chump block. They play a, a single chump block or we kill it. All right. Good game, my friend. Dark Return is in the deck. We did not have to need it, but we did have it. All right. That puts us at 7-1, 14-3 on the night. We're still in gold? I guess. That's fine. Excellent. Feeling real good about that, and we're up, uh, we're gonna be up a lot of gold. Hey, it's my friend! Xenon Destroyer is real and strong, and my friend. So is Owl. Owl's also pretty strong. This isn't very strong. Alright, anyway, that is gonna be all for, uh, tonight. I hope you all had fun with this. I, we got to do... A couple different variants on Stone Scar. That was a lot of fun. I like that we had. Ooh. I like that we had different decks in the same faction. Some same things, but some different. That's a good card too. That killer's real strong. But yeah, thank you all for joining. 
if you enjoyed this, uh, you can always follow. See when I go live. Go live with other things. We got plans on the weekend. Uh, if you want to support the stream, just being here is great. I'm glad you're having a good time, but you can always subscribe too. Get access to this cool skull, other things. I got to change up the subscription badge. I'm going to do that this weekend too. Anyway, thank you all for joining. Have a good night, everybody.